Welcome to Reflections for anyone looking for just a little bit of church. This week, I've chosen a small part of a long gospel reading chosen for Palm Sunday. Let's listen to Mark's gospel. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what, has, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Here ends the reading. In recent readings, we have seen how Nicodemus and the Greeks came to Jesus to learn from him and to worship with him. And now a woman comes to anoint him with perfumed nard. As our 40 days of Lenten disciplines begin to disappear, we are invited to lavishly serve Jesus. But how, when the physical presence of Jesus is gone and we can't go back in time over 2,000 years and attend to his needs? What can we do before his march into Jerusalem and before his crucifixion? How do we love Jesus like this woman did? I certainly do not have the answers to these questions, and I think that the answers might be different for each of us. But I will take a shot at sharing some ideas as to how to serve Jesus, particularly in these final days of Lent. I think we first need to use our imaginations, using our mind to invite Jesus to be right next to us and then ask him to stay for a while. We need to then use our love language and or our spiritual gifts to love and serve Jesus. In our mind's eye, for instance, for those of us who have strong service and hospitality skills, we might make a dinner for Jesus, providing a place for him at our table, with or without our family around. We can imagine giving him a plate of our favorite food prepared from our best family recipes and watching him savor them. For those of us who love with affirming words, we can shower Jesus with a loving tribute, valuing his teachings and healings and his unyielding love for each of us. If we have artistic skills, we could do a work of art for Jesus using our favorite colors and motifs. It matters to Jesus that we give him gifts no different than the woman who anointed him. She modeled what Jesus wants the disciples and each of us followers to model in our words and actions for others with whatever work we do in God's kingdom. 
So if we serve Jesus, we will join Mary, Martha, Nicodemus, and today's anonymous woman, and prepare his body with gifts for what is to come on Good Friday and on Easter. And all of God's children will sing, Hallelujah. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My song choice this week is Time to Say Goodbye by Jackie Avanco and Sarah Brightman. I like to imagine these two singers are saying goodbye to the living Christ in the day before his crucifixion. Lean in and listen. <laughs> 